It's an extraordinary possibility, living organisms floating in the clouds of planet Venus. But this is what astronomers are now considering after detecting a gas in the atmosphere they can't explain. Joining me now live is astrophysicist and cosmologist at ANU, Brad Tucker. Brad, this gas is called phosphite. Now, what exactly is it? Do we have any idea? Yeah, so, I mean, simply it's a mixture of phosphorus and hydrogen. Uh, now, we've seen, and this is kind of where the excitement is, that we've seen on Earth microbes in caves uh, producing this gas. Um, now, there's lots of other natural sources that can be created. Um, and when we look to Venus, and this is actual photos from the Russian Venera probe back in the 70s on Venus, it looks pretty terrible. It's a thick atmosphere, sulfur dioxide, uh, carbon dioxide, pretty terrible place. And yet when they found phosphine announced this week uh, in the atmosphere and they ruled out all potential sources, it got people excited because one of the sources it could be, uh, which you know takes a lot of evidence to get to, is microbes. And so microbes in the atmosphere of Venus is a very exciting prospect if it's true. It's very exciting actually. So I guess if life did exist on the clouds of Venus, what would it have looked like? Do we know or is it still too early? Yeah, look, you know, th this is kind of one of the interesting factors is because Venus is so terrible, it doesn't really fit in with the sort of idea of, of life almost as we know it. You know, it won't be really water-based. How do you survive those temperatures? It's 462 degrees on the surface. The pressure is enormous. And so how do you have something that just lives in the atmosphere, again, if this is from life? Uh, and then something that produces or turns whatever food uh, into phosphine, it gets really interesting because it's starting to question and starting to push our bounds of what may life be. And this is one of the reasons why people look for signs of life and we go to Mars and now probably we'll go to Venus to look for it is, you know, we only know of one planet with life so far. What does it mean to, to be alive and, and be life, so to speak? It's a really existential question that finds these, these extreme types of things uh, really pushes our bounds of knowledge. Well, what a, a fascinating discovery. Fingers crossed we find out more about could there be life on Venus, Brad. Now, in a first, astronomers have detected a giant planet orbiting a dead star. What does this mean? Yeah, you know, this is interesting because you know, what we call dead stars are, are white dwarfs. So these are stars that they've grown. Some, this is something our sun's going to be in billions of years. So they've grown, um, they puffed out as a red giant, they shed out all those layers, and they end up as a white dwarf, kind of a revenant core where not much is happening. And so we thought in this process, the star would expand and it would swallow or destroy other planets. So in our solar system, Mercury, Venus, Earth, probably Mars would all be gone in this process. And then it comes back and, and that's it. Now, this star, WD 1836b, or the planet, rather, around the, the star, uh, it orbits 1.4 days uh, is a year. So it's like so close to the star, way closer than Mercury. So how did it survive this whole process? And maybe this means there's a hope for some of the planets in our own solar system when this happens to us in billions of years. Now, Brad, this one's also quite interesting because this week we saw a much-awaited first private rocket launch. It had a misfire at an Aboriginal community in South Australia's far west coast. There was a second attempt this morning to launch uh, this private rocket in Australia. Did they have a success today? They did. So Southern Launch, uh, launching from the Canuba uh, test range. So this is far west South Australia, had a great launch uh, earlier today, as you're seeing on the ground, uh, or on your screen, rather, launching from the ground into space. Uh, and it's really cool, because he said they tried Tuesday, uh, and it didn't ignite. Uh, and a lot of people were disappointed, but, you know, it's hard. It, it, it's rocket science. It's hard. Um, you know, even Falcon 9 is called Falcon 9, because 1 through 8 failed. So it's a great to see that they succeed. Now, they went to about 60-ish kilometers in the air, so not quite into space. Um, but, you know, the exciting thing, this was a private company kind of doing it with off-the-shelf technology in the first for Australia and just showing what can really happen in this blossoming industry we have here. And what does it mean then for these private companies? I mean, given that this was the first private rocket to launch in Australia, it almost opens up a realm of possibilities. That's right, you know, and this is something that we have to really thank the Australian Space Agency for. Once they came in a few years ago, they allowed the infrastructure, the support, the bureaucracy actually, to have these groups who had these big goals and ideas achieve what they wanted to. 
Uh, and we see other groups in the Northern Territory in Queensland trying to do the same thing. And for us here in home, instead of being reliant on overseas companies to launch our satellites, not only now can we build and design and test them, but we have a way of launching it because this was launching a payload um, to test some equipment for the Australian Air Force. So it directly benefits us. So increases our knowledge and our skill set, uh, increases, and again, in this relationship, not uh, just a business, but the local uh, traditional owners in South Australia, as well as uh, keeping the money kind of in Australia and sending it to overseas. So it's a really great promise, a, a great one to get off the ground. Yeah, a massive feat for everybody involved and, and absolutely great news for Australia. Now, Brad, um, I'm all into game shows, but this one's <laughs> a little bit different. It takes it to a whole new level because a new game show may actually soon be airing and the winner will get a trip into space. Uh, fascinating. <laughs> uh, how will this work? So are you saying you're not going to be a contestant? I am this? not into who dares wins, uh, <laughs> but it's not for me. But, I mean, others might be. Take us through exactly what's involved. That's right. You know, and so they're, they're NASA and uh, SpaceX uh, and a private company, Axiom Space, a group we've talked about building a private space station, has agreed to essentially launch with the production company uh, a reality television show where the winner gets a ride and a stay at the space station. Uh, this looks seems really far fetched, but as we saw with uh, the Crew Dragon launching these two astronauts on your screen a couple of months ago, with the development we're seeing in space, it was kind of only a matter of time, to be honest. Um, so not surprising. Now it's not going to happen next year. They're looking at uh, airing the show, I think, in 2022, maybe 2023, with the launch happening in 2023. Um, but yeah, uh, look, we would see a reality television show where the winner and the ultimate survivor goes into space, at least safely. I don't think the losers just get launched into space. <laughs> I think only the winner safely does. And look, I think this just shows how fast space is accelerating for private travel, that you can do this, that this thing is in the realm. As we talked about looking at shooting a Hollywood film with Tom Cruise, um, you know, maybe in another time, uh, and private groups looking at space tourism, this is all on the cars and, and people are planning it. So it's a definitely going to be an exciting 10 years as these bigger and crazier ideas become a reality. Well, Brad, it will be interesting to see if the ratings for this are out of this world, I guess, uh, <laughs> remains to be seen. That was my attempt uh, well to be done. funny. The puns are thank always encouraged in space. That's right. <laughs> Brad, thank you so much. Unfortunately, that is all we have time for. Brad Tucker.